Hey, it's Sol with another video. In the upcoming patch 10.1.5, Dragon Racing will be available on Kalimdor, and there are hopes that Dragon Riding itself will be allowed to be a thing all over that continent and other continents, whether there's racing going on or not. Here's what's also exciting. Data miners have identified nearly 100 mounts flagged to be usable in Dragon Riding, expanding the current selection of four plus skins to, well, a whole lot of mounts. But which ones exactly? We're going to cover all the mounts we know so far and a quick crash course on how to get them. So like the video, subscribe for more WoW coverage, and let's get started with Nether Drakes. So Nether Drakes were one of the very early kinds of mounts that we were able to get back in the Burning Crusade days. To get these, we needed to do the Netherwing dailies down in the southern part of Shadowmoon Valley, or whatever it's actually called over in Outland. By turning in eggs and completing dailies, once we got to Exalted, we were able to pick up this and a selection of mounts over in Shatrath City. Quick tip on that is to wait for Burning Crusade time walking to be a thing so you can get some additional rep bonuses. There are also other kinds of nether drakes that could be found that are now unobtainable. These were ones that were found from uh, becoming a PvP gladiator. So if you happen to be a gladiator and you had those mounts, those mounts will be able to be uh, dragon ridden if that's a word. There are dragons of all sorts of shapes and sizes and places to find them, so I'm gonna kind of shotgun through a lot of these to keep this guide pretty brief. So the Azur Drake is a rare drop from Malagos in the Eye of Eternity from Wrath of the Lich King. The Blue Drake is a rare drop by completing the Oculus Dungeon, Wrath of the Lich King. The Bronze Drake is something that I referred to as the Honda Civic of mounts back during the Wrath of the Lich King days. In order to get this, you need to have completed a good chunk of the Culling of Stratholme dungeon on time, which should be extremely easy to do these days. The Red Drake is a purchasable mount, you need to go to a vendor over in Dragonflights in order to buy this, and you need to be exalted with the Worm Rest Accord. To do that, strap on a tabard, go into some old dungeons, and have at it. The Twilight Drake is a rare drop if you defeat Sartharian down in the Obsidian Sanctum while all three of his Drake things are up. The Black Drake is also from Sartharian, and according to comments, if you happen to defeat him with all three Drakes up, this is a 100% drop chance. Now, I'm not certain if both mounts will drop for the boss at the same time as a stroke of luck, but, well, you're probably going to be coming back here multiple times anyway. The Blue Proto Drake is a popular and also a rare one. This one drops off of Scotty over in Ugard Pinnacle. The Time Lost Proto Drake is one of the rarest mounts in the game, found wandering around Storm Peaks, and... Well, good luck trying to get it. All you have to do is find it and kill it, but there are a lot of people that are probably doing the same thing, or at least trying to sell a chance to get this mount. The Violet Proto Drake is also a tough one to get. You need to complete the What a Long Strange Trip It's Been, which means to complete pretty much every holiday in World of Warcraft across one year. The Albino Drake is an easy one. All you have to do is possess 50 or more mounts. The Green Proto Drake is a little bit out of the way to get. You need to be revered with the Oracle Faction over in Sholazar Basin, rather the Lich King. Uh, you can buy this thing called a Mysterious Egg, and after you wait a while, it will become a cracked egg that you open up and ta-da, you get this mount. The Ironbound Proto Drake is one of many glory kinds of mounts that are earned by completing numerous achievements inside a given raid. In this case, this one takes place in Ulduar during Wrath of the Lich King. Knock out every achievement and this mount is yours. And the same thing goes for the Rusted Proto Drake. You get both mounts as a freebie, I guess. Based on one of the most famous dragons ever in the Warcraft franchise, the Nexian Drake is also a pretty rare drop whenever you down her. Undead Frost Dragons were really popular back in their day, and you know, they're still popular now. In order to get the Icebound and the Bloodbathed Frost Brood Vanquishers, you need to complete the Glory of the Ice Crown Raider on 25 and 10 men respectively. The Volcanic Stone Drake is kind of the same flavor. In this case, you need to complete a set of dungeon achievements, and this takes place during Cataclysm. The Drake of the East Wind is another raid achievement, also in Cataclysm, although this time it involves the first tier, which is actually three raids. You pretty much need to do all of the things in Blackrock Descent, Bastion of Twilight, and Throne of the Four Winds. The Drake of the West Wind is acquired by reaching Exalted with Baradin's Wardens. This is on Tol Barad, which is the PvP zone. The Drake of the South Wind is a rare drop from Alakir in the Throne of the Four Winds. Altarius is another very rare drop that comes off of Vortex Pinnacle. Good luck, maybe you'll get it during Mythic Plus. 
And there's a more recent one, the Drake of the Four Winds, which drops off of Ishak. It's a rare over an Oldham, you just need to make sure that you're phased for Battle for Azeroth content. The Vitreous Stone Drake is a very rare drop from Slabhide over in Stonecore. The Phosphorescent Stone Drake drops off of a rare mob, Anx, who's located somewhere in Deepholm. The Sandstone Drake, which happens to be a two-seater, is also a transformation, and this mount is learned by obtaining the Vial of the Sands. It's an item that you can buy from the auction house, but also an alchemist can make it if they have the recipe. The Pure Blood Firehawk, it's not a dragon, but it's definitely kind of like a Proto Drake. This is the rare drop off of Ragnaros in the Firelands. In case you're having trouble getting that one, you can maybe settle for the Fell Firehawk. This one is obtained by possessing 250 mounts. The Corrupted Firehawk is another variant. This one is obtained by completing various achievements inside Firelands. Experiment 12B is a rare drop after defeating Altraxion in the Dragon Soul Raid. The Armored Skyscraper is a very cool dino-like mount. This one drops when you complete all the achievements inside the Throne of Thunder. Also similar, getting the spawn of Galakras is achieved by completing all the things in the Siege of Ogrimmar Raid. The Dread Raven is earned by, as you can see, by possessing the Warlords of Draenor Collector's Edition, or every now and then it'll go on sale or might reappear in the shop. The Emerald Drake is earned with another collection-based achievement. In this case, it's to collect all the different kinds of drakes. The Corrupted Dreadwing is another variant of the Raven type of mount, and in my opinion, one of the coolest looking ones, but it is kind of a grind to get. In order to get this, you need to be at least friendly with the Order of the Awaken and possess a bunch of Apexis crystals. Good luck. The Infinite Time Reaver is a rare drop during time walking. All you have to do is, well, defeat a boss, any boss, and it might have a chance to drop. The Valjar Stormwing is kind of a pain to farm for. You need to get Paragon boxes from the Valjar. And on a side note, the PvP version of these mounts will also be available as dragon riding. The Spectral Terror Wing is expensive at 90,000 gold, and you need to be exalted with the Zandalar Empire. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem certain that the Alliance equivalent of this mount is going to be available as dragon riding either. The Cobalt Pterodax can also be purchased, this time only at 10,000 gold. You can see we're getting into a kind of theme here. You have to be exalted with Talanji's expedition and then throw down another 90 grand for this variant of the mount. This variation, like the others, goes for 90 grand and you need to be exalted with the Voldunai. The Twilight Avenger isn't so different from the other Storm Drake like mounts, although this one only drops off of island expeditions. The same goes for the island Thunderscale. It may depend on the kind of island that you're farming, but at any rate, it's a pretty rare drop. The Dazarlor Windweaver is a free version of this mount variant, and it's obtained by completing the glory of the Dazarlor Raider from the, well, Dazarlor Raid. The Severian Dreamer is a unique one, only available in the in-game shop, and it still exists there, at least for now. The Obsidian Worldbreaker is a unique one. Only people who were able to participate in the WoW's 15th anniversary event had the opportunity to get this mount. The Uncorrupted Voidwing is another FOMO-style mount. This is only obtainable for players who had completed the Nihilith Raid on Heroic difficulty while it was current content. The Colossal Slaughter Claw is a different kind of Dread Raven variant. This one is obtained by doing Paragon boxes for Maldraxxus. Another variant is obtained by just kind of crafting it using the Abominable Stitching feature for the Necrolords. The Hulking Deathrock is probably the hardest of these variants to make. You need to complete a daily event over in Maldraxxus where you take certain slimes, in this case a violent one, feed them to a vat, kill a rare, and hopefully this will drop. The Predatory Plague Rock is a little bit easier to get. You need to use the Anima Conductor to unlock this rare, kill it, and this will have a chance to drop. The Tangled Dreamweaver is obtained by having the Dragonflight Heroic Edition. Uh, as of this recording, this might not mean anything, but it, the expansion is on sale right now. The Frostbrood Protoworm was something that we were hoping would be included in Dragon Riding at the start of Dragonflight, although it will be soon. Unfortunately, this is a FOMO mount. You need to have played through the Death Knight starting intro before Wrath of the Lich King Classic started. And for now, that's about it. I know I didn't count exactly 90 something or 100 or so something mounts, but included with these were a bunch of different kinds of gladiator mounts that used the same sort of skeletons as what we saw here. There are certain requests that I'm hoping to see will be fulfilled soon, like there's one shot mount with a metal kind of dragon. I think that one was really cool. I'm hoping to see that one. Uh, but what sort of mounts were you hoping to see? Or are you glad to see some included in this list? We're hoping to see some more added 
as you know the, the weeks and months or so go on before the launch of this patch. So let me know what you think in a comment below. Leave a like, subscribe for more content, catch me live, and I'll catch you later. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy. Thank you.